Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. I'm Shannon Shine. And I'm Silomon. Today we're going to talk about some healing trauma and how we've personally kind of navigated healing our traumas, what trauma means to us, and just some advice because, you know, this is a question that we get asked a lot being spiritual beings, spiritual leaders, um, holding space for these kind of discussions. And people come to us and ask us how we started getting into like meditation and how we started or how I started doing like channelings and talking to spirits mm-hmm. and things like that. So we want to talk a little bit more about that from a trauma standpoint. Uh, so I'd love to hear what trauma kind of means to you so we can dive deeper into this discussion. Mm-hmm. Such a, uh, you know, a common thing that we all share on earth is trauma. We, so I believe that trauma is a end product of holding on to a negative experience. Mm. Yeah. So if we perceive something as negative and we when and we suffer from it and we hold on to that, it becomes trauma. I can see that. Um, I, I would say very similar things. It's kind of the energy that we hold on to um, after an experience. The, the actual definition says a deeply distressing or disturbing experience and the result of. So you were pretty right on there. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I have a lot of trauma coming from different experiences with relationships and even financial trauma and We've got COVID trauma. We've got sexual trauma. We've got worthiness trauma. There are so many different kinds of trauma. Um, And some people have more physical trauma from Mm. more physical accidents. But I think today we're going to focus on a lot of like emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. That's where I have a lot of background. Yeah, I have a lot of that trauma as well. It, it, It sounds like you're naming off flavors of ice cream. There's just so many different kinds of of trauma that we experience on earth so it's important that we talk about we we talk about it we acknowledge it that it that it's a thing that's a part of our experience if you're out there listening i would love to see the chat and see if there's anyone out there that's been kind of experiencing different kinds of trauma what are some traumatic things that you're possibly working through so maybe we can discuss that if you're listening to this as a later episode you're getting the replay you can join us in the bring me to life community group on facebook where we can continue this discussion so in general i think that i'd like to kind of start with like the worthiness trauma Um, that kind of stems back for me in a really emotional way as far back as i can remember being alive as a human in this experience um always trying to to feel like i was kind of like good enough or seen enough or heard enough Mm. um i was taught at a very young age it's better to to be out of sight out of mind kind of thing and that was kind of traumatic for me um being a leo and somebody who learns through experiences and expressing and discussing my life experience being told to be out of sight out of mind is kind of hard to take in you know like yeah i was gonna say that sounds opposite of (laughs) your type of energy yeah which is why i'm very much about helping others be seen and heard and witnessed for their experience and their self-expression so i found that through a lot of my different avenues of healing my trauma it's been helping others kind of be seen rather than having to hold that in because I've noticed that working through feeling worthy, um, feeling balanced in relationships and things like that, it it is really important to hold space for others to kind of heal with you because it shows me that, you know, if I've had these crazy experiences, what have others had? So by holding that space for other people to discuss what 
they may or may not feel worthy in. Sometimes people don't feel worthy to accept money. Sometimes people don't feel worthy to accept love, to be in a relationship. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> th- there's there's so much that goes into kind of worthiness, which is why I wanted to, to kind of dive into that discussion. Yeah. When you when you said uh, worthiness and having a relationship, that, that definitely hit me. You know, there's a time in my life when I was uh, in my mid-20s and I didn't, I was you know not in a position to be in a relationship because of all the trauma that i've had and uh you've definitely helped me to heal a lot from it so thanks definitely i I think that is important to hold space for because there's so many people who feel like they're not worthy of love have you ever heard of the statement that you got to love yourself for others to love you or Mm -hmm. something along those lines Mm -hmm. and it's funny because it's so true because after you know deciding I'm going to do my own thing and I came to a conclusion I didn't need a relationship I I was just happy doing my own thing I ended up just flowing right to you I think it's true in in some ways where it is important to love yourself but I think it's also important to hold space and realize that other people are going to love you through your journey because I was kind of the opposite in a lot of ways like I, I was ready to just kind of be on my own and be single for a while But at the same time, I can't exactly say that I was loving myself when you appeared. It it took some getting used to having somebody that enjoyed me for me because so many people judged me for so long and told me how I should be. And it made me feel unworthy of someone's love who could love me unconditionally. So that statement's kind of rubbed me in a weird way for a long time to think that, you know, people have to think that they love themselves to be worthy of love because I know a lot of people that are still working on loving themselves and understanding themselves and it makes them afraid of falling in love. Well, I would say at least taking a step to loving yourself more and at least you acknowledged you didn't need a relationship. You wanted a friend. Mm. I think that's that's true as well. Uh, I guess what I'm getting at is it's okay to still be on your own self-love journey that you right. you it's... still deserve to experience love and navigate new friendships because um just kind of reflecting on that trauma I was coming out of I was coming out of a, a long-term relationship and it felt like in that relationship everything I was doing was wrong and right at the same time it seemed like it was right but for that person it was wrong and there was a lot of just like heaviness and it caused that traumatic experience for me and I have to say that having you as a partner was super helpful because you gave me someone to talk to you you were willing to hear it out and I think that for a lot of people that are going through trauma in that way where they're feeling unworthy um especially when there's a partner in, involved, it's important to have a an open throat chakra and communication skill so that you can express maybe why you feel unworthy and exploring like why you think you don't deserve that kind of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I mean, I, I see Mooney's comment there as well where she's saying it's helped to have people loving her um, realize she needs to love herself more. But... You know, I think that um, the universe gives us an opportunity to just, you know, really, f- because I think we're all one. I keep saying this, and I'm, a, I really keep believing it is that we're we're all one. You know, we all are specks of light from the from the great central sun, the source of all life, and we get an opportunity to you know send that love to ourselves which is very interesting because it's like somehow we're programmed not to in this world we're programmed to give it all away and to not really think about ourselves you know they've glorified um sacrificing everything for everybody but Mm -hmm. i think that even just a small opportunity to to send that love to ourselves even a little bit even being even even if it's just an acknowledgement i this is something i need to do definitely then that that's like a first step and being able to get there being all one with everybody you're 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 
beginning that journey with yourself, the universe is going to start reflecting it back out towards you. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying like you gotta, you gotta go through trauma and you gotta heal it all up in order to be loved by somebody, but at least like take a first step to finding love for yourself. And even just a little small step, everything could click into place and, um, you know, because I think you took a first step. You, you, you made a choice. You did a little ceremony, and you're like, "I'm gonna do what's best for me. I'm gonna get this dude out of here, and I'm gonna live my best life." Totally. Uh, I think doing rituals and having routines and practices to help you break out of your traumatic cycles is key. I'm gonna switch gears here a little bit. So. One of the reasons I did that was because I realized <laughs> I realized it was part of what I call a control drama. And I learned that term from the book Celestine Prophecy. Um, it expressed that the term control drama, from my perspective, is a series of events or energy or feelings that we continue to allow ourselves to have. So sometimes you may see this in friends or uh, family members where they just keep doing the same things over and over and they don't necessarily like learn from the lesson and that's called a control drama it, you're letting that dramatic experience control you over and over you might date the same kind of people or maybe you just keep losing jobs and it's like the same cycle you get a job for like six months and then you think you're gonna love it and then six months later you hate it and you you start doing the same thing over and over certain people have that kind of control drama i see that in clients and things like that where they just get stuck in these cycles and they can't shake them um it kind of reminds me of the meme with the the spirit guide or the angel and it's just like kind of like face palming <laughs> and it's just like have we not learned this lesson yet like <laughs> okay, I'll send it to you again. Like you're going to keep learning those same control dramas. And, and you're talking about a, um, a ritual I did that I, I try to do when and I feel like I need to shake things up is like sit down and write down my, my release and my manifest. And um, I think we're going to talk about some ways to work through trauma, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about a couple other things. Um, someone in the chat brought up the concept of um, they, they had an illness or a sickness when they were younger and it made them really anxious at a young age. And, I can't speak from having an illness myself, but I can speak from being a child of loss and destruction. Um, and that made me very anxious at a young age. That's another trauma that I, I, I like to say I'm a survivor of because um, I dealt with a lot of just destruction. There was darkness, there was drugs, there was yelling, there was broken things. And it, it was a lot to kind of deal with. And as I, it grew up to be an adult. It, it kind of like blew my mind a little to, to realize that I was surviving through those things. And not only that, but I lost my mom at six and my dad at about nine, nine to 10. And dealing with death at such a young age is probably one of the most traumatic things that people say you can go through it that young of age other than like being sick yourself. So I can only imagine that. Um, and it made me have a different perspective on life that, you know, we don't live in this body forever. Um, I'm kind of having different perspectives on that as I navigate time being kind of an illusion and different and things like that. Now that I'm expanding my consciousness, but for a long time, it was like hard to grasp what death meant until I started kind of connecting with more spiritual energies and kind of discussing with spirits that have transcended, like what it means for them to die. Um, and that was something that helped me with my trauma to, to realize that, you know, the perspectives that a lot of mainstream society have on death aren't necessarily true. Um, or true for everyone. I think it, it's like a perspective thing. So a lot of trauma comes from our fear of dying or our mm. fear of survival. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of breaks down into the emotional chakra centers of fear and guilt and shame um, and grief. And that's where a lot of our trauma comes from, which is why I was so adamant for so long in building a kind of a program to help with the alignment of energy and work through those different aspects of fear and grief and 
releasing truth and becoming more clear on what it was I wanted to feel rather than focusing on the traumatic feelings and the hurt. So trauma has been a, a really big part of my life for a long time. And that's not even going into the trauma I've had um, from having my own business and having to get over kind of the fear of uh, failure versus success. Um, or even in my teenage years when I dealt with more like sexual trauma and again, fear of unworthiness or just so many different things. Mm -hmm. There's been so many different traumatic experiences through life. But as you said before, like experiencing trauma is part of our experience as humans. Mm. So why is there, do you think there's any other reason for trauma? Why do we have to go through things like this? So it's a part of our, our kind of ascension. I have explored this a lot with the spiritual channel that I am or express or however you want to say it. I don't even know how to talk about that antenna. topic sometimes. That antenna channel that I am. Um, I, I've discussed <laughs> with spirit that we have to understand trauma as kind of part of our role here. When we decide to incarnate, it's because our energy holds a purpose in this big grand scheme of experiences. And it goes back to what you said earlier of we are all one in a lot of ways. And that sounds kind of hippy dippy and woo for a lot of people. But we are mm -hmm. all part of that central sun, that, that great source, the God, the, the universe, energy. And it manifests as us as physical experiences because in a way it was bored and it wanted to know what it was like to feel. But when it wanted to experience the sensation of feelings, it couldn't just be good or just be bad. We have to understand trauma because without the experience of trauma, the good wouldn't feel good. It would just be an experience. Does that make sense? So, yeah. It's kind of like the Pandora's box where, yeah, you get to have this knowledge, you get to, you know, have this understanding, but, you know, you have these highs and and lows. And it's, for a lot of us, harder to go through the lows. Um, but, you know, I think that, like, it is it is really, I th I think our greatest lessons and our greatest rewards sometimes will come through them. Um, and especially if if we are stubborn and or maybe even not as attuned to to what we're going through, because I think trauma, uh, you know, anxiety and, and fear. And when we experience that as a kid and we hold on to that for 30, 40, 50 years, it causes a lot of disease, like physical disease and so it is really important that we learn the lessons and we acknowledge the trauma for for the great teachers that they can be um and it's really hard sometimes so th this life is is really hard and especially working as a caregiver seeing you know what happens uh, as we just grow through time and it's, it can be a lot of feels, but, um, that's why I created the, the meditation on natural sweetness of life to, to be able to, uh, you know, experience that. Yes. But then move on from it and also experience the, the joys of life or the, the little things that just really make life such a beautiful experience. Mm. Totally. I like to think of life as kind of like a game or a movie kind of concept too. Like we're experiencing these things as the roles that we were given by the universe. And I've been recently listening to a podcast by Noah Lambert. I think it's called Synchronicity. And he went on this kind of discussion about how, you know, sometimes our avatars get bored and they need something to shake up the experience so that they're not in that like day to day routine. And a lot of times people have a hard time in the, the spiritual awakening when they start realizing that they create their own reality because they're like, well, I didn't create sickness or I didn't create you know, getting raped or something terrible. Like, yeah. but in, in, in some ways 
there's something about our experience that needs that catalyst to make us better humans, you know? So people always kind of like are a little taken aback by me when I start my story and I'm very boldly like, yeah, so I lost my mom at six and I lost my grandma at eight and then I lost my dad at nine and I just like go about this like death circle of all of the things that I went through and people are just like, how is this human like just speaking about those things? But for me, I've come to the conclusion that those events make me me. You know, like even when I'm really frustrated, I have to remind myself that like I'm going through those experiences because they're going to help me somehow in life. Um, People really don't like the term sometimes when I'm like everything happens for a reason because it's like kind of fluffy and they're Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't want to hear that right now. But Mm -hmm. for me, it always helped me get through because it was kind of something spirit repeated in my mind when I was like, why is this happening to me? Like, why is my mom dead? Why is my dad? Like, as a kid, I was a little confused. And I like asked spirit these questions. And they're like, everything's happening for a reason. And now I find that it's because I'm supposed to be able to hold space and like, express that for other people to realize that it's okay to go through those things. And it's okay to find other connections to spirit. And it's, it, it you can survive through sexual trauma, you can survive through illnesses and things that you know you don't necessarily always have control over in this time and space but somewhere your higher self made those decisions to make you a better being Mm -hmm. and to if nothing else teach others how to learn from you i think that's why i made my personal mission to to just live a life that inspires others to live their best life because you know like whatever it is you're going through you're you're meant to survive it to the best of your ability and that's like make your mess your message and heal from it and show others that you know you can shine through it too and that they're not alone like so many people will go through trauma and have these experiences and they think they're so alone um, I know that recently like probably one of my biggest more recent traumatic events was kind of like my my miscarriage experience I don't talk about a whole lot I did an awakening with the girls so if that's like an experience you want to hear check out the episode with like Rebecca I think is who I dove into that with but when I was in it I felt like my whole world was rocked like everything I had worked for was falling apart I felt like I wasn't going to be able to continue my mission I wasn't sure if I was going to survive I had to get like I had to it was the first surgery I had to go through I had all these like complications with my health and it was like how could I be such a spiritual being and like feel like I was doing all these right things and have something so traumatic hit me and I realized you know like I've been doing pretty good for a while and my experience was like going up for quite some time and it was spirit's way of being like hey remember you're a human and remember you have lessons to learn too and like you're gonna survive through this and I know that in the time I was not thinking I was gonna survive through it but what got me through was like having you to talk to having a a solid team to 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 kind of check in with um journaling was such a huge thing for me journaling and looking back at pictures man photographs they are a magical experience when you are not feeling too good and being able to like go back and like feel like you're into that time like frame again and like seeing yourself smile if you're ever going through a very traumatic experience if possible look at photos of a time that made you feel good and will help you bring that feeling of goodness back um i'm just kind of diving into things that have helped me through it now is that okay did you have something you wanted to say Mm, um no that's that's all very you know, hard stuff to experience, and I just want to send all my love and, and condolences to, you know, all the all the hardships that we've had to gone that we've had to go through in our lives. And I think you all are so powerful and so resilient. And I think that not only will you survive, you will end up thriving. And um, you know, just like in, in, in the movies, characters have to go through a lot of hard stuff to become their strongest uh, self for their mission. Um, so, you know, I send you a lot of love and everything for what you had to go through too, Shannon. And I'm proud of you for acknowledging it and sharing and, and helping others. So 
uh, yeah, let's get into some tools people can can utilize to work through whatever trauma. Totally. I, I mean, I think it's it's being able to talk about it. One of the reasons I started getting really into having this podcast as an outlet was because I feel like it gives me a space to talk about it with you being a great reflection and kind of discussion holder with me, but also so that I can share the experiences with others and remind you guys like you're not alone so that you can share those too. I know I talk a lot, but it's (laughs) this topic is really important to me because it's, it's kind of the work I do is helping people work through their trauma. Um, I deal with clients on a daily basis that are going through transformational events, whether it's the loss of a loved one or they've just dealt with a a health issue or they want to start the next chapter in their life or a business and they just don't know how. And because I've dealt with so many transitions and traumatic events from seeing people go through addictions to, you know, living their best life, I've seen both sides. Um, It's, it's a really important thing to hold space for people to discuss what they've been through. Um, I love having discussions with people. I used to, that was one of my favorite things about having the shop was I never knew who was going to walk in that day. And I got to learn so many beautiful, random things about people when you just hold space for them. And so many people would be like, wow, it was so healing for me to just like walk in here and like share that random story. Mm -hmm. And when I do the podcast, the, this podcast or the awakening with the girls podcast, it's always kind of funny at the end. I like to ask people like, how do you feel about this episode? And they're always like, you know, I didn't really expect to go there, but it, it mm-hmm. was super healing to like just have that discussion with you. So mm-hmm. um, that's one of the ways that I work through trauma is just holding space and sh- sharing from my experience. I, I've recently found out that some people in discussions don't like when you share a personal experience right after they share experience. But for me, it's how I relate and understand because I want to empathize and feel what they feel, even if it's a little different. Um, It's how I get me myself into the space of helping them work through the trauma. If that's what they want, you know, sometimes they just need a place to vent. We're all a little different. I get it. Took me a while, but I'm getting it. But (laughs) that's, that's part of how I, I work with trauma. Um, Journaling and writing about my feelings has been a big thing. Like I've always kind of used my journal as kind of like spirit, like, okay, dear person, this is or dear soul spirit, this thing, you know, book Mm -hmm. page, hi page. And like, this is how I'm feeling today and just kind of write it down. Sometimes I I used to like to write down like what I did that day and it was kind of like a recap or a time capsule. But when I'm going through some intense traumatic experiences, it's like all the feels and why I felt that way or what I wish I could say to a person, but I know that it wouldn't reflect in the same way. And sometimes it gives me the ability to kind of think that discussion out so that I do get the courage to have those discussions with people um, be it friends or family or clients or whatever. Sometimes you just need somewhere to like vent it out and work it out before you take it real time in reality. <laughs> so journaling was super mm-hmm. helpful. Yeah, journaling is great. I I love journaling. Uh, I also love um, you know meditation. Obviously, has been huge for mm, for definitely. trauma. And um, like the other day, we were we were in a weird space and we were trying to go to bed and, and we put on a meditation on YouTube, um, you know, just a random one. And it was really hard to sleep to. And then we just switched. We put one on that we were comfortable with and we passed (laughs) out within a few minutes. Yeah. Some meditations are really great for healing trauma. Sometimes you got to make sure you're in the space for them. Like the first one we listened to, I was already like in my thoughts and like dealing with some personal anxiety. And it was like, think into your feelings go deeper into it, go deeper into it. And you know, you have to be ready to deal with your trauma to heal your trauma. Like that should be a thing. You got to be ready to deal with your drama to heal your trauma. Someone write that down. (laughs) Um, Because, you know, if you're not ready to deal with it, then you're not going to heal it in that moment. Yeah. Even, even dealing with it could be acknowledging it. Right. I mean, I'll say like, I guess I'm coming from the perspective of that meditation. Like I was acknowledging it, but I also needed to sleep to heal. And you don't want to like think yourself into insanity when you're trying to go to right. bed. No, so, that one, that one was because it was like, okay, acknowledge it. And instead of move on, it was like, now bring it into your whole being. Yeah, be it. It really wanted me to really 
feel it. But so then sometimes you just gotta say, I went through that. And then you can let it go. But on another note, then you changed the meditation. Yes. And you actually put on one of your meditations and it was the reprogramming meditation. So rather than making me have to feel into it so deeply because it was something I was obviously already feeling so deeply into, it was giving me anxiety. Your reprogramming meditation took me to a state of looking at it from a different perspective in reprogramming it so that I could face it. I could acknowledge that feeling. I could work through it and then I could sleep and then my body felt better and I woke up in a much better place to deal with and process that drama and heal that drama. So Mm -hmm. it was just a a powerful kind of reflection on like you got to be in a certain space to to heal it. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are different ways to kind of come at that because, you know, there's boundaries and a time and place for things and okay. right before bed isn't always it right so okay so, <laughs> okay, so med- meditation um you know be be careful with it when when you're ready i'm sure it will happen but also i think this one could be for any time is calling on guides or angels uh, you know i like yes. to do a lot of channeling and i oftentimes call in archangel michael um, to help me out with that, to sort through it, to even just talk it out with him. Where sometimes there were a few times where I literally talked out loud to him and started bawling my eyes out uncontrollably. And, you know, after a few minutes, I was clear of these tears, feeling much lighter and, you know, much, um, I don't know more it's just like when you 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 know that you you made some progress when you feel lighter Mm. i think that's some good advice for people who are more introverted too and like afraid to put their problems on other people they're like i don't have anyone to work it out with or i feel like i'm taking too much space or like you don't want to put your drama onto someone else it sounds like you just needed to be witness and you know the archangels and spirit is always there to witness Mm -hmm. you i think that's why prayer is such a big thing in a lot of different religions is because Mm -hmm. um channeling in some ways is a form of prayer and allowing yourself to kind of be the antenna for the response so having discussions with the archangels or channeling or automatic writing or you know whatever way you're connecting i I feel like i do it sort of telepathically i've been trying to figure out how it is i communicate with these energies but it seems like it's just all going on really quickly in my mind (laughs) but I, i do the same thing like i'll be kind of in like i don't know a bickerment say i'm in a bickerment with you about something that seems really important and all of a sudden (laughs) in my head i'm like i just want to be witnessed like why can't he get it and all of a sudden i'll have this like almost conversation with archangel michael in my head that's like okay he's seeing it from this perspective you're seeing it from this perspective and it's almost like the angels give me like a play by play of what needs to, to happen in the discussion or like how to calm down because i've been through so many traumatic arguments with partners and family members in the past that it's like i've i've created um a dialogue or a, a i don't even know like a space monologue. yeah a monologue with archangel michael to be kind of like my coach through it um and when i'm dealing with things in a more like healing perspective like okay somebody's hurt what do i do rather than like panicking like i used to um i have like a dialogue with archangel Raphael where he's like okay take a deep breath get out your reiki hands it's okay like calm the person down like be okay with it it's it's part of this experience like what are they going to learn from it and i gotta let and i have this like whole experience in my mind like a whole nother timeline almost that like helps me work through it so Mm -hmm. like connect with spirit and you know if you if you're going through those control dramas those repeated things or like let's say you know you have kids and they just they insist on just doing the same frustrating things over and over because they know it gets to you and you you know that it's going to happen like make a dialogue with archangel michael to to kind of play out in your mind like okay so so and so is doing this again they know it gets on my nerves but instead of reacting in this way that i know gets a rise out of them Archangel Michael is going to remind me to take a deep breath and to instead say it differently. Like almost like I hate to say play it out in your mind before it happens. But if you get okay with the experience happening in your mind, like the traumatic thing that keeps triggering you, then you create 
pathways to, again, reprogram that experience so it doesn't have to keep happening that way. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Yeah, it is very important. And we're going to break out of those cycles. You know, wherever you are, whatever you're in, whatever trauma you've had, there is a way to make it out of there. There's a way to, um, even if you can't completely let go of that trauma, you can at least uh, lessen its effect on you and um, become more healthy because stress, anxiety, all that stuff, maybe in the short term can be useful, but holding on to it for too long is very unhealthy. Mm, Totally. So in not trying to like super push my alignment program here right now, but I do want to say that again, like, a lot of the techniques that I've personally used to work through those cycles and I still use because I'm still human. I'm still working through them. It's not like I'm some guru that's got it all figured out. It's a process, but the tools I've collected, I've put into this alignment Mm -hmm. program. Um, I used to call it my chakra program, but I want to make sure I'm culturally correct here because it's more about the emotional perspective and these energy centers in your body they hold fear they hold shame they hold guilt they hold grief they control your truth and your expression and your clarity and your attachment and there's ways to release all of those expectations and all of those different things and we I I think we want to do a whole episode on like the expectations of society, especially on like relationships and friendships and dynamics as humans. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of a whole nother trauma episode that I want to dive into that we might cover some like sexual trauma in that episode Mm -hmm. as well. Um, But aside from the, the different tools that I've put into the alignment program, other ways that I've worked through it are with my art And again, you mentioned rituals earlier, like I'll go through and I'll do a manifest and release ritual where I'll burn the things that I no longer want safely. And I will bury the things that I do want to manifest like a seed. And that's kind of a ritual I do when I want to manifest and release things. It's kind of like marking a moment in time that I'm declaring I'm reprogramming that experience. Mm -hmm. So I think next year we should write some stuff that we would like to create on some kind of like eco-friendly something and bury it and grow our seeds from it Mm. or or put it in our flower patch. That could be a thing. We have a flower patch right now and where that flower patch is, I've done many a little ritual around the tree that used to be there. So, yeah. um, That's okay. So you're... Energy center. What is this? What's the program called? The energy center. So it's my chakra eight week course. I'm calling it alignment now. So I'm going to, it's on my website. If you want to know more about the course, just hit me up. My name's Shannon Shine. You can hit me up and be like, Hey, I would love to know how you work through trauma. Tell me more about that course Mm -hmm. that you mentioned in the podcast. I'll get you the info. It might be called chakra, might be called alignment, you know, rebranding. Awesome. But I want to talk about art for a second and how art and music are really beautiful outlets too. Um, if you can't, if you feel like you can't express them, like you're not a good artist or you're not a good musician, experience them, play music that makes you feel a certain way and process those feelings. Look at art and experience even TV shows and entertainment episodes that help you process that trauma. You know, sometimes I find a good series that just, connects with the feelings I'm working through Mm -hmm. and I'll binge watch it because it just helps me process it Um, or a good podcast or something there put your entertainment in a way that's going to help you process art yeah that and, and instead of focusing on drama focus on things that are like uplifting uh I have a cheesy I have a cheesy indulgence of Hallmark me and your mom talked about how we love the Hallmark (laughs) channel because you know, when you need something positive, usually they end positive <laughs> and that, you know, the outcome that's coming, it's not super traumatic. Just like a it's a little quirky romantic movie. It's really hard to watch like movies with so much destruction and death and mm, yeah, war yeah, when I you've know. dealt with a lot of trauma. <laughs> I, I get it. And you know, we had to be the change that we wish to see. So I, I hope through a few fundraisers and, and some 
uh, stuff like that, we can get some equipment and make our own shows. Yeah, I want to make my own series and TV dramas. That would be yeah. great. Maybe not I mean, TV, that's, internet. That's my that's my goal right now, and that's part of working hard for it, you know. So, um, <laughs> Mooney's in the chat. She says, "Yes, Hallmark. Yes, uh, yeah. It, it's just got like a weird positive vibe to it. It's it's funny, but that, that's fine. Yes." So, do you have anything else you want to share on healing trauma right now? You want, you want uh, to- yeah, just something little. We were talking about channeling, and we were talking about art and music, and those are all things that you, myself, and our friend BP are uh, creating a little course. It'll be the Divine Expression Creativity course, but it'll be, uh, you know, another round. And this time, I'm thinking of adding more time to heal trauma and things of that nature because I, th- I think they they do block us from really expressing ourselves mm. yeah your divine expression and creativity course was really helpful for me because it came at a time that I was having a personal block and I hadn't done a lot of art and things like that in a while sometimes I get blocked there so <laughs> I, I needed to have that jump start and your course was really helpful in that and it actually inspired me to start wanting to write some things for a similar course so i'm excited that you're going to let me kind of collab with you and share more experiences in your mm-hmm. your next run of that i don't think yeah. we have exact details on that but y'all should stay mm-hmm. tuned because no, it's going to be awesome I have some ideas maybe you know getting people to make their own podcast um and this uh i'm thinking round two maybe incorporating a little more role play role play writing interesting we're gonna have to have a a discussion i'm excited for that mm-hmm. to, to happen but yeah I'm let's storm it up i'm it was storming earlier here and i'm gonna storm it up later on uh, ideas for this for the round two program dude we had such a crazy rainstorm earlier it actually like bent my tomato plant i hope my tomato plant's okay it had a traumatic experience yeah it did so our plants can have traumatic experiences as well and we got to send love to them and treat them really nicely plants okay so we're basically advanced plants in yeah. I've had a lot of plants that just have traumatic experiences. You know, sometimes they like a certain amount of sun. Sometimes they like a certain amount of water. Sometimes they run out of nutrients and they need replanted. Sometimes that, and I'm seeing that as like, sometimes we got to like pick ourselves up and move and replant ourselves. Mm. And man, I like analogies, but yeah. this has been a really good episode. And I feel like I could break it off into multiple more. Um, we barely touched on the, the COVID trauma, which is what I think inspired some of this episode. And, how the collective yeah. is going through. I think through. we all know what that's like right now. <laughs> yeah, we're all going through <laughs> a collective traumatic processing experience. And I think that part of COVID is the collective going through an experience of all understanding what it's like to, to have trauma. You know, like some people say that those that have had long-term anxiety are doing a little bit better or like not as affected because, you know, some of us are used to surviving day to day and not knowing what's next and some people that you you know like being an entrepreneur and uh, self-employed like I don't have a normal paycheck so Mm -hmm. the financial instability to me is kind of like I have to to work in a different way I don't have the the week-to-week paycheck where other people have always had that cushion and they started having kind of like meltdowns and things like that when covid happened and they couldn't work their normal jobs and you know like i just kind of got through that i know a lot of other people that are like you know we're still we're not we're not on top but we're still thriving we're still surviving like we're still making it work um and then some people you know just it covid's been an interesting experience (laughs) for a lot of people i let's let's all make it through we're all gonna make it through you know we're, we're doing all right we're we're still alive um, we're, we're here together and, uh, we'll, we'll make it through. It's happened before, you know, Totally. we're, we're alive. So, you know, people made it through then multiple waves and multiple times. You're a survivor. You're going to make it. I am thriving. <laughs> All right. So I think we should take a quick imagination break okay. and use our imaginations mm. to manifest a more healing world so we're gonna play a song because seal and i are gonna actually do a little energy reading here for you but before this energy reading we're all gonna take a moment and visualize healing through our traumas and sending love to others to do the same 
So stay with us. Thank you for that little manifestation break. I hope you guys visualized some healing vibes going out into the universe. So I want to do a little card reading, energy reading here for all of you. I am using my language of light deck. It seems to be a popular favorite in my daily videos um, or my, my live videos that I, I do sometimes on my Facebook. So the first card I pulled, uh, I thought this was a great card for today's discussion, is the Soul Journey card. And this card is here to show us that we're opening a new chapter. This is the beginning for us right now. This is a time to go easy on ourselves and be courageous, loving beings and breathe into the present moment and allow any anxieties to, to drop away, to, to work through our trauma and to enjoy the journey and stop thinking the future will bring something, you know, scarier and instead to think that it could bring something better. When the future arrives, it'll be now. So try not to worry so much about it. Just accept that what's happening is happening for a reason. Step out of the shadow of your past and all that matters is that when you decide to do from this moment forward, your life is yours to live in whatever way is meaningful to you and you brought yourself 
into this life for a reason and you're responsible for the quality of it. Like you get to choose your happiness. So try to understand your reason for coming here and acknowledge that your experiences aren't necessarily meant to hold you back, but to give you something to work through, to experience. And just remember that everything you have done was the best thing you could do at that time. You know, sometimes we learn from it and that's why we make the choices that we do. And as you move forward, you'll start to understand those motives. Experience allows you to better handle your crisis. And you are now deliberately creating a new chapter in your life. Just by being here now and holding this discussion with us, you're such an amazing pioneer. You're such an amazing soul. So again, just kind of remembering that everything occurs to help us clarify and focus on what it is we want, what it is we love, and don't let anything sway you from this. Care about how you feel by adjusting your focus to the soul of your heart and be kind to yourself right now and in every moment because, you know, again, you're doing the best that you can. It's okay to treat yourself to to some extra self-care, some extra little things, some spa treatment, some experience, some massage or some energy healing to help you snap out of it and to, you know, declare this as a moment of change for you. The next card that came up is the awakening card in the awakening card it shows as we're experiencing an aha moment it says that this will come as a feeling of deep truth that may have seemed to slip your mind or maybe you're feeling a little out of sorts lately because you're reprogramming you've often thought that there must be another way to experience and live this life and you know now you're about to discover it you're allowing yourself to open your heart and mind to really feel into this full, authentic you. The time-honored ways that have worked in the past are no longer bringing you the results that you desire. And, you know, they may have become obstacles to your dreams, so it's okay to let those control dramas go. Beliefs become intermingled with everyday processes and who we think we are or who we think we have to be. No wonder it can seem so hard to let these things go. But when you rouse from the slumber of the conformity, you awaken into the same new world. This new world that allows you to see through new eyes, to express your deeper soul love, and you can see beyond fear to the creative possibilities that are everywhere. This card is a reminder to relax and enjoy this journey because this is a part of your natural evolution. Working through this trauma is for a reason. Nourish your mind and body with the wisdom of your soul by taking deep breaths as often as you like. Close your eyes and smile for a few moments every hour as you enjoy connecting with your soul on a deeper level. And recognize that the same life force that's flowing through you flows through all of life. It is connected to source itself. The last card that came through is channeling. You're experiencing your stream of consciousness. You have the ability to tune in to different streams of consciousness and to gain wise information to help with healing and expansion. Channeling shifts your awareness so that you can stream information from various frequencies. It is just like tuning into a radio station. If the information doesn't agree with you, then tune into something different. You can't expect to hear rock music on a classical music station. With practice, you will be able to tune into your soul transmissions easily. You have focused a part of your stream of consciousness upon the earth's plane to experience life in a new and various ways. Sometimes that does involve working through traumatic experiences. Your soul loves you so much and it's always transmitting this love and truth, even when you have forgotten, even when things feel hard. Acknowledge how source sees you. Imagine seeing yourself through the eyes of your soul. Allow yourself to feel loved by that experience and open your heart. Let love in and let source and your soul look through the world, through your own uniqueness. And when ideas pop into your head, write them down. Ponder whether this information makes your heart sing or shrink. So my little book here gives us a practice. And if you want something to do, you want some home play, you can write down or draw what unconditional love and eternal love means to you. Write down or draw what your stream of consciousness feels like and how you can go back to this moment of unconditional love when you're feeling like you're going through something dark. So I 
was going to do a meditation, but I think I want to let you guys kind of take that in for a second. And then I'm going to let Silo do his solar flare. Maybe we'll just end it with a meditation. I've kind of liked ending the podcast with meditations. Yeah. Cool. So funny because since your birthday, there hasn't been a whole lot of solar flare activities. We got just three B class flares, which are very small. There's nothing uh, too ex- it's exciting. I mean, if you saw them in person, it would be really exciting. <laughs> but in terms of solar flares, not that exciting. Um, so the sun is at a solar minimum right now. There is not a very high chance of any major solar flares right now. And that's all I got for you. So, hmm. I guess there just needed to be a burst of light on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty magical. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. So... Wow, I, I'm still kind of like reflecting on how those random cards I pulled were so powerful for today's discussion. It was it was really magical. Uh, mm-hmm. During our little break, I was getting it all ready. I was like, I feel guided to read from the book today because usually I just kind of channel my own thing. But that was so spot on. Um, that being said, I, I think it, it'd be a good time to do a little meditation. Is it okay if I lead a little meditation? Yeah, I'm going to debout for the meditation. And I will say thank you all for listening and enjoy the meditation. All right. So if you are in a space, you can get comfy and meditate with me. I would love for you to close your eyes and place your hands on your heart. And imagine that the space you are in is filling with light. Allow that light to surround you. It's going to help heal you. And in this moment, I want you to give yourself permission to reprogram your soul. If you have to, you can speak aloud and tell your soul you are ready to experience bliss. You are ready to channel your mission. You are ready to release any control dramas that no longer serve you. a deep breath in call in that light and as you exhale exhale as deeply as you can releasing any energy that just no longer serves you any programs that upset you or force you to act in a way that doesn't feel in alignment with how you really wish to show up and as you breathe in that light breathe in confidence Breathe in clarity. Breathe in strength to know that you are a survivor and you are a thriver. And you deserve to experience a life of bliss and joy. And allow the moments of bliss and joy to stand out more than the moments of darkness. Take a moment here to speak with spirit and reprogram Maybe there's a time that you know is a trigger for you, an experience that you've been playing over and over in your mind, in your life, in your relationships, whatever it is that's holding you back, reprogram it. Take a moment here, breathe in that light, and breathe out the energy that you keep repeating so that you can heal from it. Face that drama. So that you can heal that trauma. Ask spirit how you can be guided in these moments. Speak with spirit and say, I am open 
to trusting my soul's guidance. I'm a channel to experience these feelings. Now allow your soul to move through your body and your mind so that you can accept and trust its messages without resistance. Let every part of you open up to your soul and relax in its presence, knowing that you are here for a reason. You just have to come home to the absolute fullness and beauty that is you. Allow a smile to erupt within your soul and your whole being to beam with this light. This light that you're filling yourself with. And as you smile, the world smiles. And it's okay to feel as if everything can be amazing and perfect. Even if it's not in this very moment, it can and will be if you allow it. Work through the trauma. You don't have to dismiss it. Acknowledge it. Allow the light to heal and reprogram it. Smile if if you can, as big as you can, and really bring in that light. Just get excited. Just get excited about life again. It's okay. You're going to shine through. You're going to survive. You're going to thrive. Something magical can happen. You just have to be willing to let your world change. When you feel ready, breathe deeply in and out. Become more aware of your physical reality and how magical you are. And you can open your eyes. I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you listen to this on a replay, join us in the Bring Me to Life community where we would love to hear from you. We would love to hold these discussions and continue on. But until next time, it's time to stay awake and shine on always. For many of us, spirituality is just the the quest to find essence or true meaning and to really just connect with a higher consciousness. Connecting with your spirituality is very important in this life. By becoming mindful of all of it, you can realize where you are and if that is leading you to where you want to go. Listen to the little simple things because it's those little simple things that are going to shift you vibrationally in such a way that will prepare you to become very intuitively minded and ready to step forward in the next part of your path. I hope you can feel the love that's inside you, that's inside me, that connects us. Thanks for shining on with us.